Thank you. Good morning. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for being here. And the uh, first talk after the, the party is always uh, a bit challenging to attend. So I'm going to be talking uh, in the next 20 minutes or so about OGC API. I think most of you are, or many of you are already familiar with it. But if you're not, uh, I will go quickly a little bit about what it is and why we, we should pay attention to it. So first of all, a note to highlight the reason why we want to use standards in the first place. So if you're developers and you, you are uh, developing a server-side application, this means that you will have access, uh, a, a wide range of clients will have access to your server, uh, and they will be able to consume services from your server. Uh, and on the client side, it means to, you can connect to uh, a wide range of uh, servers. So basically, uh, what it should mean in a nutshell is uh, more data access with less coding, hopefully no coding, just configuration, the standard is the same, and you can connect to different uh, clients and servers. So this is what we would have in an ideal world. In the realm of geospatial information, uh, the Open Geospatial Consortium, or OGC, is the organization who develops and maintains uh, these standards. So, uh, in, and it does so uh, in a formal process, which is uh, collaborative, uh, and it involves the, the members. So there are different members in, in, in OGC. Uh, they include uh, large uh, companies, nonprofit organizations, small companies, even individuals. Um, maybe uh, some of you know, are aware that OSGU is, is a, an OGC member, is an associate member, uh, and therefore, as OSGU Charter members, you also have uh, uh, the right to, to be a, an OGC member. So what really is a, an OGC standard? It's basically a document that was established through this uh, process, this consensus process, and it's a, a set of uh, rules or guidelines that were designed to achieve the maximum degree of interoperability. So there was a lot of thought put put into uh, this uh, objective. And these are some standards that uh, you may already have seen in the past. They are in the core of many of the special data infrastructures we, we still see up to this day, uh, WMS, WFS, uh, and so on. This was what we call the first generation of uh, OGC web services. Uh, and they had some characteristics that were um, that were the, the that tell us uh, what was the, the the technology that was used at that time. So basically, there was uh, the use of XML encodings uh, and and so on. So things have changed uh, in the meantime, in the last uh, 20 years, and this is no longer the, the type of technologies that we see uh, in the mainstream web. And that, with that idea, uh, we have a new breadth of uh, standards in OGC, with a new family of standards that is built on modern web development practices. So what does that mean? It, uh, for instance, uh, it leverages schema.org to make sure that uh, data is discoverable in search engines, because most people these days, they are uh, turning to search engines for, to look for for data, also, also geospatial data, they are not really going to, to portals. They, they are uh, self-documented, so there are machine-readable descriptions of the APIs, which are generating using uh, open API, which are created with open API. And the development uh, of these standards is similar to development of uh, open source projects. So it's at the, pu at the public eye, uh, on GitHub repositories, and anyone can uh, inspect the state of the standard and can even contribute through the normal mechanisms that we all know, issues, um, pull requests, and so on. So the, the goal of all this was to improve the developer experience, especially for developers that are not 
um, that don't come from the GIS domain, or specifically they don't have any knowledge about OGC services, the idea was to make uh, these standards accessible and to, have, to don't have, have such a steep learning curve as we saw in the first generation of, of services, of OGC services. So there are many uh, OGC APIs. Uh, each one is uh, targeted at a particular type of geospatial data. So let's say you are interested in moving features, there's a, an OGC API uh, to tackle that. Or if you are interested in coverages, there's another OGC API uh, and so on. So they are in different stages of development. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about, uh, about that in a second. The ones that you see uh, in, in, in solid green are the ones that already had at least one part uh, approved. And this is a quick overview of the resources in OGC API standards. The reason why I show this slide, and I'm, I'm not sure if you can read very well, but that's fine. What I wanted to highlight here is that there is uh, a common structure to all these APIs. So you will see that every uh, OGC API has some paths that are common, like for instance, the, the landing page, the, where it all starts, the conformance declaration, the, the, the API definition or open API definition. You will see these in, in all the APIs, and then most of APIs also have a, a collections endpoint where you list all the available collections. And uh, this means that in terms of development, if you are implementing uh, OGC APIs, uh, it's much easier because you, you, uh, once you implement one uh, API, then you can reuse a lot of the code to imp implement the other ones. And uh, many pro projects, if you look at projects that do implementations, you will see the organization of the code. So there's a lot of reuse. Uh, at the same time, if you are developing clients, there's also uh, some predictability of the, the path, so you know what to expect when you uh, start developing for a new API, uh, and, and you can reuse some code as well. So this is uh, something uh, new uh, in comparison to the previous generation of OGC standards, and I think it's something very valuable. Uh, OGC APIs are not uh, uh, one monolithic uh, standard that contains everything, but instead they are developed in discrete parts. So what does it mean? It means that uh, you think about uh, a set of functionality uh, and, and this is uh, uh, packaged into, into one part. Normally it starts with, uh, with the core, which is the core functionality, so the thing that most people want to see in that API that will cover mo most of the use cases. And then from now on, you start adding more parts that uh, add more functionality. And I think this is uh, interesting from the development standpoint, because it means you don't need to wait uh, so much time in order to have the standard approved. The, the standard is developed uh, in these parts, so parts get approved one after the other. Sometimes some parts are developed in parallel. That also happens. Uh, and at the same time, it means that you don't need to, um, to use all of these parts at the same time. You can use just the ones that you want. So this is the concept of building blocks, where you can assemble um, a novel API, where you can uh, enable your existing API with functionality from different APIs, so part one from this, part uh, one and two from, from that one, and so on. So it's kind of, a, you can think of it as a Lego pieces that you can uh, put together and then uh, assemble some, something new and still be conformant. I think it's important to highlight uh, um, the fact that uh, these APIs are in a way, replacing the functionality that was there in the OWS services, so WMS, WFS, and so on. And I think they're not only replacing, they are also extending, because they are adding more things that were not there. Um, and so the, 
there is uh, actually a policy in uh, OGC that says that when you have a standard that is replaced by a new standard, then uh, deprecation may occur. And so the, the standards, the, the old standard will be called legacy standard. So what does this mean from the practical standpoint? It means that it will not uh, receive uh, more updates from, from OGC. So th there will be no more developments on that standard. Uh, the standard does not disappear. It does not become invalid. But it will no longer receive updates. So it's probably a good idea to, uh, if you start something new, it's probably a good idea to start using the, the new APIs rather than the, the ones that are going to be deprecated. And uh, if you are using the, the old services, it's also a good idea to start thinking about uh, a transition, you know, especially if you want to benefit from, uh, from the new things. So this is uh, an important question. Who is using uh, these APIs? So if I take the example from uh, features, OGC API features is one of the most mature of the OGC family of OGC APIs, the, the first one to, to come up. Uh, and you can see there are uh, many, many uh, server-side and client-side implementations using a bunch of different uh, programming languages. You have uh, libraries and, and so on. And these, uh, if you go to the GitHub repository of, of, of the standard of um, OGC API features, you will see this list that uh, is growing. And actually, if you have an implementation of OGC API features or another API, you can do a pull request and, and submit it and be listed uh, in, this, in this list. So one thing is to implement, and then if you really want to take compliance to the next level, you want to, uh, first of all, you want to validate to make sure that uh, the implementation is according, is doing what it claims to, to be doing. And then if you want to show, to advertise uh, the fact that you are compliant, you could apply for uh, a certification, for compliance certification. So that means you, uh, this, there is a process in OGC where you, you can do that. And uh, once you have that, then you will have a, a compliance badge that you can uh, display uh, in your project. There's also the concept of early implementer, and I really like this concept because it means it's one of the first, it's one of the projects that is implementing the, the standard, even when, when the standard may not be uh, completely um, uh, ready, but it means that there is already a test suit and you, you, you go for it. You are one of the first ones that uh, say, okay, I want, I want to go uh, and implement this. And one of, uh, some of these early implementers, they, they are they're very important because they are showcasing uh, the implementations, some of them uh, becoming, uh, become a reference implementation. And these are implementations that are uh, publicly available that, that every, anyone can consult uh, and they can, get, they have, can, can have an idea of uh, how an implementation of the standards looks like. So they have an important function uh, in the community. So we, then you can also apply to, to be one reference implementation. Uh, OGC APIs need to have uh, three reference implementations in order to, to move forward. Um, so if you are very quick, uh, you can uh, apply to, to be one of these. And the, um, the reference for validating, um, vali for compliance in, in OGC is the t Team Engine uh, Test Suite, which is also, by the way, uh, an OSGU uh, community project. So, uh, let's talk about uh, implementation of OGC APIs in uh, OSGU. So uh, there are more OSGU projects that implement OGC APIs, but these are the ones that are actually certified compliant and they are listed in the, in the OGC website. Any, anyone can, can see this. So you can see there are basically uh, these three, three projects and um, they, as, as I said before, 
uh, now you d you're not compliant to just one standard, but one part of the standard. So you can be compliant, for instance, to OGC API features part one, or OGC API features part two, uh, and so on. So there's more granular compliance than it used to be the case in, in, in the past. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I wanted to highlight there are also some reference imp implementations within OSU. So they are uh, in the use case that I described before. So the, you can also check these in the, in, in the OGC website. So there are many examples of uh, OGC APIs in production uh, already deployed. And uh, so you can ask, actually, uh, there's a nice gallery in the Paiju API uh, wiki project where you can see many different uh, examples. OK, so this is the, the part that I wanted to um, highlight, which is how these APIs are developed and how you can get involved if you would like to do so. So first of all, if you want, you can check the public roadmap. So this is available on this uh, URL. And you can see what is the, the state of development of each one of the OGC API parts. So you can see uh, there are some forecasts in terms of when they are uh, going to reach uh, uh, publication, estimations. And there's also the, the status. So there are these different steps in the development of the standard. So the, the last ones are the ones that I show here. So uh, it, it, it has, uh, goes to the architecture board. There's a review from the architecture board and naming authority, which are some bodies within OGC. And then there's the public review where everyone can, can give uh, com comments. And finally, they are released. So you can check in these boards what is the status of each one of uh, these parts. As I mentioned before, there are the GitHub repositories. So each one of these APIs is a repository. And you are very welcome to uh, join discussions and uh, participate uh, in an active way. And finally, uh, there are the, the code sprints, which are a very important mechanism for the development of these APIs, because this is where the APIs are put to test. You have the implementers and the editors in the same room, and you can actually uh, go into practical issue matters, so the, the implementers can give feedback to, to the editors or can clarify things, and this is how we make sure that the standard is developing and is actually addressing the use cases that it needs to be. And actually, the result is that uh, when it's published, it's already quite polished because there was this uh, interaction with, uh, with developers. So I invite uh, everyone to, to, to come to these uh, code sprints. They are a lot of fun. And if you are new, there's a, even a mentor stream in the, in the first day, which has a lot of tutorials where you can learn more about uh, the APIs. And there will be one next week in, in London, Geovation. Uh, it will start from uh, Wednesday till Friday, and you can still re register if you like and even attend uh, online. So this code sprint will have three special tracks, uh, one about data quality and AI, one about validators, and another one about MapML. So there will be specific activities and people working on these three uh, um, topics, but actually it's open to all OGC APIs and, and encodings. You can also check the developer website that has more resources about uh, OGC standards in, uh, in general. And the OGC API workshop where you can learn more about, uh, more in depth about uh, OGC API standards. And that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, no, I don't know if we have time for questions. Yeah, thank you very much, Joanna. Are there any questions? Come on. Hey, um, just a question regarding the early adopters. Would that apply like to all the um, specifications or just for those which are not yet approved? 
I could not hear you. Like for well. the early adopters? Um, ah, the uh, early adopters. Yeah. Uh, is, does this apply to all the specifications or only for those which are not yet approved? Or um, So the early implementers? Implementers, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you can apply um, for the specification when it's just being... Sorry. Yeah. So the question was, uh, if when can you apply to be a, an early implementer of the specification? And I think an early implementer is when you implement it, when it's just released. So uh, just in the beginning, there is a, the test suit. You, you need a test suit. You implement it. And then you can, you can apply for this uh, status. OK, thanks. Thanks a lot for the presentation. I was wondering for the deprecation of OGC web services, any timeline already planned for that? Thanks. Uh, yes, uh, I mean, um, it depends. Uh, the question is, it depends on the, on the standard. So once you see that the, all the previous functionality was, um, was already covered, I think there's, a, I, I'm not 100% sure, but I think there's a pre period of two years then, then it will become uh, deprecated. So, for instance, in the case of uh, OGC API features, I think uh, if it, it's quite close if it's not already already there. So there, there will be a short period, and and then, and then it will be deprecated. So it, it will depends on the on the APIs. There's not a timeline, a single timeline for all of them. It depends on their status. That's what I wanted to say. OK, thanks. Maybe we can have one more. Thank you for the presentation, Joanna. So just to verify. Um, anyone can join the code sprints, even if um, yeah. um, if you're an OSGO charter member or not. Exactly. Yeah. So, okay. And they're in person and um, remote yeah. as well. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. So the code sprints are open to anyone. You don't have to be an OGC member or even an OSGO charter member. You can you can um, you can join the code sprints, and you can join in person or, or online. 